I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I tell you what, we're going to have some fun on this week's show. And I trust that you've been paying attention. You've got to pay attention out there in the tech world of what all's going on. And if you don't know, then that's why you come here. Yes. We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. Once again, thanks for joining me. And right here at the top of the program, I'd like to remind you that we are sponsored by Citrix Systems and their new go-to meeting product. I say new, it's been around a while, but the new part is that it now has HD faces. HD faces. Faces. That's awesome because in full glorious HD, you can now communicate with your friends, family, co workers, you know, those around the world that you might want to talk to through your computer. Yes. And in HD quality, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, HD quality. And guess what? You can get in on this free. Now, this is the last week that Citrix Systems will be sponsoring. Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, for this particular uh, program, shall we say. So if you haven't taken advantage of this promotion yet, you need to go to this URL right here, right here, www.gotomeeting.com, all right, just as it says on the screen, and enter the special code word of podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, and you can get go to meeting with HD faces free for 30 days. Awesome, awesome thing. You need to to do it, just do it, (laughs) okay? All right, let's talk about what's happening this week in the tech world. For the longest time, HP has been keeping us in suspense as to what they're gonna do with their WebOS. Now, you remember their WebOS was an operating system they created for their tablets, their HP tablets and You remember last week I talked about the fact that HP is now the number two tablet maker in the world, even though they got out of the tablet business because they sold so many of their tablets when they lowered the price. Well, all of those tablets had the WebOS on it. And now that they're out of the tablet business, what are they going to do with the WebOS? Well, they pondered, they debated, they thought about selling it, around and around and around, all kinds of options. Finally, they've done the right thing. I gotta give them kudos for this. They released WebOS to open source. Now they're gonna continue to contribute to the open source project, but it will be totally open, totally free, and that, that is awesome. Because you know I'm all about the open source. That's right. So it's gonna be interesting to see what comes of the WebOS operating system, and who knows? Maybe it'll give Android a run for its money. You just don't know. Anyway. Let me scroll on to the next item we have here. Google Chrome is the most secure browser. Now, the main reason that Google Chrome is so secure is that it sandboxes, you're familiar with that term, sandboxing, it sandboxes all of its operations in a, an enclosed sandbox so that no viruses and junk can get either out of it if it's coming through the web to your computer or in any way affect it. So it's, it's totally secure. And it has now been officially sealed with a stamp of approval by the Acuvant Labs, which concluded that Google Chrome is more secure than rivals Firefox and Internet Explorer, mainly because of their sandboxing and plug-in security. Awesome. Good job, Google. All right, next item. And I'm losing my light here. It's late in the afternoon. I normally do the program early in the day. I'm losing my light. So it may be getting darker and darker and darker. Don't worry. It's just my lighting. I I like natural light. You know what I mean? Anyway. Uh, Adobe scrambles to patch Acrobat for a zero-day vulnerability. 
Oh my! Adobe is having problems because a new critical vulnerability for current and older versions of the Adobe Reader and Acrobat for Windows, Mac, OS X, and Unix operating systems. The attack has been exploited by hackers and targeted hacks against the Adobe 9 Reader on Windows. And it even allows these groups... Boy, it is getting dark. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Anyway, it's allowing groups to actually take over people's computers. That's bad. I mean, dude. But they are working on a, a release uh, of their uh, a patch, basically, that will close that hole, that security hole, and make it good. Okay? Go! <laughs> yes, it's time for the Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week is unique because it is the Linux edition Geek Software of the Week. <laughs> Thanks, Drumroll. <laughs> Reminded me there. The <laughs> Linux edition Geek Software of the Week this week is Easy Tag. Easy Tag. Now, the reason I came up on this is because, as you know from last week's drbill.tv, I talked about the fact that I have moved over to Linux completely. I now use Linux for everything, and that is on Fedora, the Fedora distribution from Red Hat, and that is my client operating system that I run on my notebook. Well, when I work with different files, there's I have needs for different things, and so I've been finding alternatives that I would normally use under Windows. Now, under Windows, when I work with MP3 tags, you know, which is the ID3 standard for tagging MP3 files, uh, I normally use MP3 tag as the software of choice for doing that. Well, under Linux, of course, MP3 tag, they don't have a Linux version. So I had to find a Linux version. Well, there's plenty out there. But the one that I found that I really liked is one called Easy Tag. And as the name implies, it installed easily. They had an RPM file specifically for Fedora. I downloaded it. I installed it. Installed very quickly and easily. Pointed it at my MP3 files and voila! I was able to uh, change the tag information and embed the album art and all those kinds of things that I normally do. Dude. So very, very nice. And I really encourage you to check on that. Alright, next item. Silverlight 5 is out. Microsoft has released Silverlight. Silverlight, as you may know, is their kind of alternative to Flash. They encourage people to use Silverlight and to use it for audiovisual programming for the web, just like people were using Flash. Didn't quite catch on to any large degree, but they have continued to work with it and so forth, and now they have released version 5. It will probably be the last version, because we don't need it anymore now that we have HTML5, and HTML5 includes a lot of um, audiovisual tags and technologies that allow us to use it natively without having to have a special plug-in. So there you go. We don't really need it anymore. But they have released it. Eh, that's nice. And uh, there are a list of features, you know, on their site. And you can download it and so forth. It will be the last major release of Silverlight and it will be supported by Microsoft until the year 2021. By that time, I'm sure no one will care at all. Sorry, Microsoft, but that's just the way it is. All right. <laughs> Two drum rolls in a Dr. Bill show? Well, that's because there's another Geek Software of the Week, and this Geek Software of the Week is for Windows. Actually, it's for Windows and Linux and Unix and Mac OS and everything. It's for every operating system. It is a program called Team Viewer. Team Viewer is... Uh, basically a program that will allow you to connect your computer screen to someone else's computer and help them out, uh, take over their PC, you know, show them how to do things, those kinds of things. But that's not all it does. It does file transfer. It does conferencing. Uh, it does a lot of different things through this program. Now, it is free, but if you use it commercially, like if you are a computer support person and you support people using this tool, they ask you to pay for it and to buy a license. And I would agree with that. You need to do that because that helps them, continues to encourage them to develop the product. And it's a good product, so I'd encourage you to do that. If you are just a regular user, Joe user out there, 
and you're not doing it for financial gain, then of course you can use it free and, and you can choose that as you install it and that is a great option. So, good program. It's called Team Viewer Remote Access Software. The all-in-one solution for remote access and support over the internet. Dude. So that's good too. Alright, another interesting thing for you, a little hint and tip for you this week, is the Geek Website of the Week. Now I don't have as many Geek Websites of the Week because they have to really rise to a high level uh, to be a Geek Website of the Week. Geek Website of the Week, blah, 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 that's hard to say, is online-convert.com. I'm going to put it right up here because that dash you got to remember the dash, online-convert.com, and it allows you to convert between video formats, audio formats, ebook formats, document formats, hashes, all kinds of different file types and formats you can convert using this particular website. No plugins to download, no software to download, you just go to the website and it will do the conversion for you. So that's online-convert.com. Wow, Whew. I have been really pushing to get through this program as quick as possible because like I said, I'm losing my light and it keeps getting darker and darker and darker. I'm fading out. You remember those old TVs where you, you turn the TV off and it goes and little, little white dots all that's left in the screen? That's kind of the way I feel. I'm slowly darkening out. <laughs> anyway, so hope you enjoyed the program this week. Got a lot of good hints and tips. Join us next time. Remember until then. Remember, remember, enjoy your tech and the doctor, <laughs> you got it, you know this, don't you? The doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.